So we're going to spend a bit more time talking about the high C method because it is one of the more popular uh, 3C based methods. So the last 3C based technology we'll talk about today is called high C. And so high C measures all possible pairwise interactions between different genomic foci on the genome. And so just like the previous 3C technologies we talked about, you, the assay starts by cross-linking, isolating, and then digesting with your standard restriction enzyme HIND3. Um, but after digestion, what you do is you add biotin to the ends of your fragments. And so biotin is a small vitamin that is pretty popular uh, for labeling uh, both DNA and proteins because the biotin doesn't really interact with uh, protein or DNA. And it's, it has a really high affinity for um, another molecule called streptoviatin, uh, which basically means it's easy to isolate biotin labeled uh, molecules. And so uh, after you add biotin to the ends of your fragments, you perform a ligation step to generate chimeric reads and isolate your DNA. And then Basically, the point of the next step of the assay is that after you remove, so it's possible to remove biotin uh, from the ends of your fragment while leaving biotin that labels interior nucleotides uh, intact. And so the idea here is that um, the ligation step uh, of the 3UC-based assays is not perfect. And so uh, while in principle, what you hopefully should get is ligation of uh, your two fragments corresponding to different loci on the genome, uh, sometimes what will happen is that you might not get any ligation at all. Um, and so basically to distinguish, for example, fragments that had no ligation versus fragments that did ha have ligation, basically fragments that did have ligation uh, between two separate fragments will be identifiable because they'll be the ones with biotin uh, labeled nucleotides on the interior. And so the idea of step D of this assay is that once you remove biotin from the ends of the fragments and you do some fractionation to make the fragments shorter, basically only the, uh, only the chimeric reads will have biotin on the interior uh, of those uh, sheared fragments. And so what you can then do is you can use, um, you can use the fact that biotin is labeling some of the interior uh, nucleotides of the uh, chimeric reads, and you can pull down those reads specifically with uh, streptovidin uh, coated magnetic beads because uh, biotin has super high affinity for streptovidin. Um, and so once you pull down the sequences that are specific, um, that specifically have the biotin labels, uh, what you can then do is you can uh, ligate some sequencing adapters and then just do some deep sequencing and therefore map your, and then map your chimeric reads back to the genome to figure out which pairs of loci were interacting. And so the basic output of high c um, after doing all this kind of like mapping and a certain amount of filtering on the reads that you get to make sure that each read is really a chimeric read, what you essentially get out of a high c assay is a plot like I'm showing you here on the right. And so this plot should look similar to the dot plots that we talked about before where both kind of the rows and the columns represent uh, different genomic positions on the genome. And a dot represents uh, information about a pair of positions on the genome. And so those dots can either represent um, single base pair resolution or more commonly they represent whole regions like 40 KB windows um, along the genome. And so basically a red dot in this uh, table basically represents uh, an enrichment of interactions or a higher likelihood of those two regions uh, of the genome interacting more than you'd expect by chance. And basically white in this plot means that there's fewer interactions than you expect by chance. And so uh, just like with dot plots, you basically kind of see a diagonal uh, on a high C map, which typically means that, of course, a genomic loci tends to interact with itself because it, it is itself. And you, again, like we talked about on one of the previous lectures, you can see these kind of like blocks on the diagonal that correspond to whole genomic regions for which you see a lot of crosstalk within that region. And so just to put um, high C, 3C, and 4C on the same page, basically here again on the left is a 
is an example of a uh, high, of the results of a high CSE uh, on the human cell line. Uh, and so here, basically, I'm trying to illustrate the difference between what you get from high C, three C, and four C. So high C gives you this like two D heat map that looks kind of like a dot plot. Um, those gray boxes on the plot actually correspond to regions of uh, chromosome one, for which we couldn't actually map reads uh, to the genome there. So there's gray there because no reads are there primarily because we can't map to that region. Um, and what you can see is that basically 3C, the classic 3C based assay anyways, is like generating interaction data on just one square of this map. Because one square of this map, remember, corresponds to interactions between a pair of loci on the genome. And that's exactly what 3C tells you is it tells you about um, interactions between just two specific loci on the genome. Whereas 4C is really like giving you a row or a column out of this heat map. Because 4C again, rem remember, it gives you the interactions between one locus versus the entire rest of the genome uh, in theory. And so that's, that's really like just pulling out a row out of this heat map. And so something useful to point out is um, the resolution of these different assays that we've just talked about. And so you might ask yourself, well, if high c can measure all possible interactions uh, in the genome, then why would I ever do use like 3C or 4C technologies if high c always gives you more data? And so there's a few reasons why you wouldn't use high c all the time, uh, but one of them is, is really resolution. Right, so the idea basically here is that with high c it's true that you uh, can potentially get uh, data on all the different interactions um, that are occurring in the genome but in practice because you need in practice you need a really high read coverage in order to detect all of those interactions and so if you think about it within a single cell um, a single genomic locus can really only be, can usually only really be uh, interacting with one other locus at a time. And so if you have loci, which for example, could and do interact with many other loci, you wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't be able to detect all of those interactions with just um, cross-linking from one cell. You'd have to cross-link against many cells. And so in practice, you might need like millions and millions of cells just to get enough um, get enough genomic fragments that are properly cross-linked in order to really detect some certain interactions. Um, and oftentimes in practice, actually what ends up happening is that you end up dividing your genome into different bins or windows, and you consider each window just one locus or one basically column or row in your high c map. And so what that means is that the resolution of high c for any individual specific locus tends to be much lower than, for example, 3C, where you're designing primers for individual uh, restriction cut sites of your locus of interest. And so the resolution of like 3C technology, for example, is much higher for the target locus than it is for high C. Um, and so I've also uh, included um, Assay. I've also included the resolution of like DAM ID, for example, which we talked about uh, in one of the earlier lectures. Um, I've also included ChIP-seq here, which is of slightly higher resolution than DAM ID. Um, and yeah, so this is just to give you a, a sense of, you know, when would you use say 3C versus high c If there's one specific locus that you really care about and that you really want to understand what it's interacting with, then 3C is typically uh, a better choice compared to like high C because if you only care about one locus in the genome, then it's a waste to sequence a lot of other interactions happening in the rest of the genome that you don't care about. <laughs>